Hey gang, Scott here. This is the final video in this series on filters in On What Effects and Photo Raw. It's the weather filter, and as its name suggests, it adds a weather overlay, fog, rain, that kind of stuff into your scenes. So I'll show you how this uh, filter works and the controls and an example photo of where I'll apply it. And if you are interested in On One products, thinking about adding them to your toolkit, check the show notes. Please use my offer code. It will save you money. It will give me a little support. And who knows? Maybe we'll come up with another series to do uh, about on one and working with these tools. So let's have a look at the weather filter in effects. Well, I'm in effects here and let me add the weather filter to this photo. And by default, nothing changed, nothing happens because by default, there's no precipitation chosen. You have to choose a precipitation, rain or snow, and then you style it and you can shape it with the sliders. So let's go through the controls and then I'll come back and, and explain you know, why I might choose something for a particular photo. Uh, besides our normal stuff where we've got our masking and our opacity, we have a bunch of different styles that are available. The first section, precipitation. You're choosing a texture and setting that texture's opacity. So this kind of works like textures, really. I mean, weather is, is a, a texture overlay. Do you have choices of snow textures like these. You have some rain textures like these. And uh, the, uh, another couple of ones in the snow here. These, these last couple, they tend to look pretty false in my opinion. They don't work very well for adding weather. So I, I tend to stay away from those. But these other ones are, are, are much, uh, much more amenable to, to blending. So you'd pick one of your styles here. And let me just choose something very obvious like Blizzard. We can set the opacity of that. So this works just like textures, right? We're familiar with this from the textures uh, tool. The next section, transform, we have the ability to do some basics on the texture overlay itself, right? We can scale it up or down if that makes sense. We have rotation. Uh, usually I'm not playing with rotation with a weather pattern because you know rain falls top to bottom, snow falls top to bottom, and the overlays you know, there, you know, if you notice, you pay really close attention, especially for rain, there's nuance in those. And so I'm not usually doing rotate. I might flip it horizontally, um, although that would really just depend on the photo. I'm not doing too much with rotation or the, the vertical bit, but perhaps the rotation horizontally. And then fit to canvas, make sure that the texture will fit across your entire photo. If I turn this off and on, we probably won't notice a difference because the textures uh, for this weather tool that come with on one. They're very large, and so they'll cover large-scale photos. This is a 40-ish megapixel photo. But if you have uh, your own uh, like overlay you're trying to, to work in, or sorry, not your own overlay, you have like a, like a really large like 100 megapixel photo, maybe the texture wouldn't stretch across the whole thing. This will make sure it does. It fits across your entire canvas. Now the bottom half, we have controls for fog. And the fog can be added in and blended in with the precipitation choice. So let me just push them out really far so you can see what's going on. And you see it adds this amount of fog somewhere in the scene. You can control the position with some of these built-in presets. And so fog from the bottom, interesting idea if you've got something like a forested scene, you're trying to create the, you know that kind of look to it. You can do things from the left, you can do things from the right. Uh, top and then the like half slow, third fast, that kind of stuff that tells you how quickly or slowly it transitions. And these kind of get you started. These position choices get you started because you can control everything with the sliders here. Distance is like how shallow or how far am I pushing in this. Uh, I did top half fast here. Oh, I've already gone to custom because I've adjusted the slider, but you can work visually. Where do you want that to be? If you need it to be on an angle, you can do that. And transition is how smooth that uh, that fade is or how you know linear it is. This would not make sense for the vast majority of photos out there. But as we'll see in a minute, this is a great way to visualize where that fog is gonna end. So those are all the controls. Uh, so you know, what would I do with this photo? Let's, let's reset this thing here. Uh, and, and why am I choosing this photo? Well, it was a rainy day. There, it, it's obvious from the subject it has an umbrella, but there's you know wet ground, wet roofs, all this kind of stuff here. Uh, I tend to like to use the weather filter 
with photos that uh, are conducive to it. Now you could do some interesting styling with say close portraits where the context of the scene isn't necessarily there, but you want to add some type of look, you know, some style to it where, you know, maybe it is like a bit of, of snow going around or things like that. You can do all that. Uh, I'm a landscape guy, so I'll tend to blend these things in with landscape photos. And um, usually I'll start with just auditioning the styles. And I like the way Eugene looks already. That one's too much. I don't like the straight down rain for this one. And I'm not going to be doing snow. So I'm going to start with Eugene. Because that's giving me a drizzle to the right. And we can see that. We can see that uh, angled drizzle coming in from upper left to lower right. Uh, the scale, I don't know if that was really necessary. But notice that you, you can play with this and get a different feel. Like if I push the scale upward, I am getting longer streaks of the rain. And that may be important for your image. So I'm going to leave that right around there. Now the fog. This is where I want to do some playing. So I'll take transition down to nothing, zero, so I can see where that transition is. And then start playing with the distance. I'm going to push this up into here. I do want to rotate it because I really just want that fog to be kind of trickling down in the background, like at the trees, and not so much covering the roofs. And now let's start that transition here. Maybe something like that. And I may still play with the distance to bring it up a little bit. So this is a little different than what the, the style gave me. But it gave me the idea of, hmm, what about some fog and mist here? This also has um, the secondary benefit of drawing my eye downward where I'd want to pay attention to what's on the bottom here. But let's, uh, let's do a before and after of weather. So this was before. And this is after. Of course, I have the, the final say with opacity, how much or how little of this entire effect do I want. I don't know, maybe something around there. And this definitely changes the mood of the photo, right? I, I like this photo. This is good. But this has, I don't know, a little bit more of a story to it, uh, courtesy of the weather filter. And uh, last, I guess, little tip I'll share is if you liked the fog but didn't like the rain, well, you know, you can take the rain away with that opacity slider in precipitation. So you've got a lot of control here to individually adjust the precipitation as well as the fog. You got your overall opacity for the whole look. Um, I'm going to add some of that rain back in, maybe at half strength. And I think I'll call this one good. And that is the weather filter in On One Effects. And uh, that brings us to the end of the video and the end of this series on the filters in On One. Hope you enjoyed this video, the series overall. If you got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.